Brisbane median house prices surpassed $900,000 for the first time in history. Find out more about what's happening in house price movement, unit price movement, and the rental market here in Brisbane in today's episode of the Brisbane Property Podcast. Welcome to the Brisbane Property Podcast with your hosts, Melinda and Scott Jennison. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Brisbane Property Podcast with Scott and Melinda and market update time. Yes, this is one of our favourite episodes. Each month, we will run through all of the data that's being reported by the major research houses of CoreLogic and PropTrack, and we will provide our summary to you. So if you are a regular listener, you will know every month we run through all of this information. It is one of our most popular episodes each month. So yet again, we hope you enjoy this market summary. Um, and and no, uh, obviously no surprise to everyone probably listening and people that know the Brisbane market as well. Um, we've had another month of um, some positive growth, which we'll, we will dive into a little bit deeper as we get going, but that's 13 straight months. It is 13 straight months. And, you know, for the first time in history, house values in Brisbane or rather median house values in Brisbane have now surpassed that $900,000 price point. So anyone that's shopping with a budget that might be seven or $800,000, you are shopping well below the median value for houses here in Brisbane. So it is important to understand, but we're going to dive into the house data and the unit data a little bit later in this episode. And um, also listings, which is an interesting one. And we will go through, obviously, as we get going through, those that are new to the podcast, um, welcome. Those that are, have listened to us quite a while, you'll, you'll know how we sort of go through the market updates as well. So obviously, we, we'll talk about listings, we'll talk about dwelling values, we'll go through the rental market, give you a bit of a summary at the end of it as well. Um, but the listings, I've probably seen a few more properties come to the market. That is correct. And, you know, that has been a relief for a lot of buyers that have been waiting to have more properties to choose from. The data has also confirmed that that has been the case. So in the four weeks um, leading or or in the four weeks up to the end of March, we actually saw uh, an increase of 9.5% in terms of new listings coming to the market. And that's based on SQM research. And that's compared to the listings that were available throughout February. So that's actually a fairly decent uplift for improving the selection that buyers have to choose from. It does provide more choice Also, I will say when we look at the total or rather the new listings that came on board throughout March this year in 2024, and we compare that to the new listings that came on board in March 2023, so we're comparing this year versus last year, we also noticed that the listing volumes were in new listing space were 12.7% higher. So that's an improvement both year on year and month on month. Um, And I think that that it's helping to provide some relief for that pent up demand that we're seeing in the the buying space, especially for buyers that have been in the market for many months. Now we've we've talked about a increase of uh, an uplift of listings, but overall um, we're still generally low um, compared to year on year on listings. Yes. So just to clarify, we were just speaking about new listings. That's properties that have been on the market for less than 28 days. That's what's categorized as a new listing. So typically that's something that's going to be coming through um, as a new opportunity for buyers to consider. We've also got old listings and they may be properties that have been sitting on the market for longer than 28 days. And those older listings combined with new listings Uh, give us a figure that represents the total volume of listings that are available at any particular point in time. So new listings are those properties that have been available for 28 days or less, whereas total listings are those properties that are available for sale, regardless of how long those properties have been listed for sale on the market. So Scott, you are correct. In terms of total listing volumes, there is still a shortage of properties that are available because there's been a reduction of 11.1% year on year. So what that says is that there's more old listings that have sold um, more recently compared to 12 months ago, because you'll recall that new listings have increased year on year, but total listings have actually decreased year on year. So Um, This is a seasonal trend as well. It does occur most years. 
in that the total volume of listings throughout March um, is higher than in February. That's something that we often see and it's something that's consistent um, across most of the preceding years. So yeah, 11.1% more properties in total for buyers to consider year on year. And, and that is something, as you touched on there, the seasonal part of the market, and that's what people need to really I know all the data is fantastic to look at, but it also we're also affected by people's lives in this market. So mm. when you when you look at the, the holidays, so when you look at school holidays, people tend to say, oh, I don't want to sell my property just yet. I'd rather have school holidays. I'll list it after the holidays. Um, hence, you know, we've had Christmas. Properties now have then come through February, March. We've had an uplift of those listings. Don't forget, we've just come off the back of school holidays here in Queensland. Um, school has just gone back. Uh, New South Wales, I believe, has just started um, school holidays this week. Um, so we've had our school holidays. We've had a little bit of it, what we've seen on the ground, our team here at Streamline Property Buyers. We've probably seen things that go a little bit quieter in the last week or two, but they will pick up again now. So everyone's back at school, life's normal, um, and properties will start to, well, people will probably go, well, look, I either want to buy or I want to sell. Um, and now that that uplift will happen again. Yeah, it's a good observation. Your school holidays can actually really impact on a seller's decision to list a property for sale. Um, and some sales agents may or may not advise them to wait or, or to push ahead with a campaign at that time. Easter is also a time where a lot of people do go away. So the market is very quiet, although we did notice there were a number of open homes scheduled across that weekend. Um, however, the volume of auctions over that Easter Saturday typically is significantly lower than a normal auction weekend. Um, speaking about auctions, yep. we can look at some of the auction data for the month of March. And when we're looking at the core logic data, it showed the average auction clearance rate across Brisbane throughout March was 64.7%. Um, so that's actually well above the long-term average uh here in Brisbane, which we've discussed many times on this podcast. And actually, I'm excited to um be inviting back some uh very well respected auctioneers to the podcast in in coming weeks who can provide some more local uh, knowledge in terms of what's happening in their specific auction markets as well. But um, according to Apollo Auctions, um, and for those that don't know Apollo Auctions, um, director is Justin Nickerson. He's coming on the podcast within the next few weeks again to provide an update. But their data actually shows that Brisbane saw an average of 3.7 bidders per auction in March compared to four registered bidders per auction throughout February. So we saw fewer people registering per auction um, between February and, and March that actually declined. However, the number of registered bidders who actively participated in each auction throughout March actually jumped to 60.8%, and that was up from 56.03% in February. So although there were fewer registered bidders per auction, Partly that could be attributed to the fact that we did have uh, two weeks of school holidays. Um, we did actually see that the the volume or rather the number of people who were registered increased um, in terms of how many of those actively participated in the auction itself. So um, more active bidding, even though there were fewer active buyers. Yeah, it's pretty accurate too. We were at an auction on the weekend um, in the northern suburb of Grange and there was, I think there was 10 registered and I think... Well, memory, four or five people were actively bidding um, on that property as well. So the numbers the numbers are correct, um, and those auctions are more and more popular, um, and it's not a surprise that those numbers are up as well. Yeah, and I think that when we're seeing those, the number of registered bidders, um, you know, consistently uh, above above two, you know, in terms of the market conditions, when we've got three to four registered bidders per auction. Um, only one of those registered bidders typically is the purchaser if the property sells, which leaves three other bidders in the market looking for a similar product. So, you know, that's an imbalance between the demand for properties and the supply of those properties. And that's in favor of sellers. And what that means is that whilst we have this imbalance, we're going to continue to see um, competition amongst buyers. And that's ultimately what drives values up. Now, I know you threw a little teaser in there earlier about um, Justin coming back on the podcast, just as a bit more of a tease for everyone. And I know that people do like those guests that come in occasionally, and we are going to be having guests coming on. So we're sort of planning ahead a little bit. Um, we've got some really exciting guests coming um, in the next few months. So keep an eye out for those uh, those guests that are going to be popping up on the podcast and sharing some of their knowledge of the local market as well um, and people that are involved in the market and know what's going on in Brisbane property, um, jumping onto the podcast to, to share that with our listeners. Um, 
So if we just jump into dwelling values. Yeah, look, I will say that um, Brisbane's property price growth throughout all of March has actually re-accelerated. So that's re-acceleration, meaning that we started to see a slowdown. And if you'll recall our podcast one month ago, where we were providing an update on the data up to the end of February, we were stating that the rate of acceleration of growth was starting to decline. And that had been confirmed for three months. However, that has turned around again in March, and we've seen a re-acceleration of price growth in both the house market and the unit market. So, of course, dwellings have experienced this as well. We have experienced as a capital city market 13 straight months now of positive dwelling price growth, and the rate of price acceleration continues to outperform the national average. So really strong price performance here in Brisbane. Um, The house market is also performing the national average, and we're going to talk more specifically about the house market, but the unit market is also a bit of a standout um, with unit values outperforming the national average between three and four times. So really strong performance there. Of course, once we're, we, we all know that when we're talking about dwelling data, we're talking about the combined value of both units and houses. So when we look at the data for March, a 1.1% increase in dwelling values throughout Brisbane. So that was up from 0.9% growth in February. So a bit of a shift um, of 0.2% across the, the monthly change. The quarterly change escalated also slightly. At the end of February, the quarterly change in dwelling values was sitting at 3%, whereas that's, um, I beg your pardon, it was sitting at 2.9% and it's now 3%. So a small uptick yet again. And that's where we talk about that re-acceleration in price growth that we're starting to see. When we look at the three-month average, it's it's starting to, to increase once again. So median values for a dwelling in Greater Brisbane, Scott. And don't forget, as we mentioned earlier, and we do we do say this all the time, this is Greater Brisbane mm. as well. So we're talking all over Greater Brisbane. Uh, um, and now that uh, median value for dwellings is $817,564. That's that's also more than last month, $11,971 more than last month. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's well and truly past that $800,000 price point. A really relevant point that you've raised there, Scott, is that this is all of greater Brisbane. So we have talked previously on this podcast about the area in which the CoreLogic data captures data for Brisbane and calls it Brisbane data. It is not just the Brisbane City Council yep. region. It includes a number of council regions, um, pretty much all of southeast Queensland, but for the Sunshine Coast and the Gold Coast region. So it does include areas um, in the Moreton Bay region, the Brisbane City region, Redlands, Ipswich, Logan, and even out into um, Somerset area. the Somerset area. So yeah. there's there's other locations that are included and captured in this data. So please don't assume that if you've got, you know, $817,000, you're shopping at the median dwelling value for Brisbane City Council region. That's simply not the case. This is all of Greater Brisbane, a very large geographical area. I think it's something like fourteen or 15,000 kilometres. That's right. Greater Brisbane. Square kilometres. Correct. It's a massive footprint. So when you, as we keep saying, Greater Brisbane, we break it down obviously in different areas, the way we work here at Streamline. Um, But yeah, Greater Brisbane, that's a huge, huge footprint. Mm. What I will also say is that when we look at how quickly the median dwelling value has changed over the last three months, at the median value level, that difference has been $30,347. So if you were purchasing a dwelling in Brisbane at the median level, you'd be paying $30,347 more at the end of March compared to the end of December. So really big shifts in dwelling values. And sometimes when you talk in percentages, it doesn't mean as much as when you actually quantify that amount based on a dollar value. So um, if you're purchasing around that, you know, $817,000 mark, that has seen a shift of $30,000 or so over the last three months. Yeah. I think buyers need to be aware of that when they say, oh, look, I'll, I'll just wait till the next one comes along. Mm. Um, and, and we, and you, you talk to people about it and you say that, look, listing numbers are low um, and the prices are going up. So if, the more you wait, um, either, either it won't come along or you'll have to pay a lot more to actually secure a property. Let's talk about the median dwelling uh, value once again, because 
we've seen a lot of commentary in the media about um, Brisbane now being more expensive than Melbourne. And we touched on this in our last pod, uh, podcast episode uh, where we did the market update. Uh, Brisbane, in terms of median dwelling prices, it does continue to escalate above the median dwelling value for Melbourne. Um, in fact, Brisbane's median dwelling value now is approaching Canberra's median d- dwelling value. Uh, but this is despite the fact that median values for both houses and units here in Brisbane remain lower than the median values for house and units in Melbourne. So take a moment to digest that. Even though the median dwelling value here in Brisbane is higher, the median house value and the median unit value remains lower. That's an important takeaway from from this episode uh, because when the media are quoting property price values or home values, they are typically referencing um, dwelling values, not house values or unit values specifically. When we're looking at Brisbane and comparing it to Canberra, Brisbane's median house value still remains much lower than the median house value in Canberra, whereas Brisbane's median unit value has now escalated slightly above Canberra's median unit value. So we'll talk more about this when we talk about houses and units. But um, again, the data for dwellings is often skewed because there's a bias based on dwelling type. It depends on how many dwellings uh, in a particular location uh, are made up of units versus houses and how that can influence the data. So keep that in mind when you're hearing or reviewing any information about house price movement or rather home price movement, they're typically referring to dwellings, not specifically houses or units. And I think it's also important to understand what's actually happening a little bit in the other markets. When people talk about that, oh, the prices might have gone up at the median value, as you just said, um, compared to Melbourne, but what's the market actually done? Has Mm -hmm. it improved? Has it increased? Because Brisbane is continuing to grow. Um, So if you look at other markets, are they doing the same sort of thing? I mean, Melbourne was 0%. um, Sydney was 03 So the markets are not behaving in the same way as what Brisbane is either. That's right. So we look at, you know, national news headlines about what's happening in terms of dwelling values. Um, And at the end of March, it would have shown that dwelling values at a national level increased 0.6% for the month of March. Um, And since the beginning of the year, the change has been 1.5% growth. However, that is a combined value of all capital cities. Um, and, And even when you break down regional information, monthly information is that the monthly growth was 0.6% throughout March and quarterly growth was 1.8% for all combined regional markets. Whereas here in Brisbane, monthly growth was 1.1% for dwellings and 3% um, for the quarter in terms of um, growth. So well and truly ahead of the national average. But also noting that Adelaide's performance and Perth's performance have been slightly superior to Brisbane's over the last uh, few months. So before we jump into the segments, and I know we've just touched on core logic, but also prop track, um, that had that's seen an increase there of 0.41%, um, and the median price there of eight hundred one thousand dollars. That's right. So prop track data also supports the uh, core logic data. They are showing the same trend there in terms of dwelling price growth for the month of March. So segments, um, and this is always I, I do always say it's an interesting one, but it's always interesting to see what part of the market is, is doing the hard yards and, and how it's moving around. Mm, so when we look at the price segmentation here in Brisbane, uh, based on dwelling value growth yet again, so remember this is combining both houses and unit data into the one, the top end of the market has definitely slowed down more than the middle and the bottom ends of the market in the three months up to the end of February. Um, and this is compared to the months prior. So for example, properties that make up the lowest 25% of dwelling values have grown 3.8% over the three months to February. Um, The middle 50% of property values are now tracking at a quarterly change of 3.2%. And the top 25% of property values have now grown 2.3% over the last quarter. So the data actually does confirm that price deceleration is happening at a faster rate amongst the more expensive properties throughout Brisbane as well. But obviously, as the unit market also continues to outperform the housing market in terms of monthly and quarterly price growth, 
the contribution that unit data makes to the lowest 25% of dwelling values cannot be underestimated. So again, looking at that price segmentation, it is all dwellings. Um, and what we're about to share with you is just how um, how well the unit market has been performing compared to the house market um, over the last couple of months, because I think that becomes very relative when we're looking at dwellings data. So if we look at if we look at house prices first, um, and the house, median house price in Brisbane, we've seen an increase of one percent in March, up slightly from the 0.9 percent in February, and over the last three months, we've seen house prices grow 2.8 percent. Yeah, and that's the same quarterly growth rate as last month. So what that means is that um, house prices um, are growing at a very stable rate month on month. So 2.8 percent quarterly growth over the last. Um, number of months indicates that 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 price growth is fairly consistent in terms of its rate of growth. Um, it also indicates that the growth trajectory um, has been consistent for at least the past four months. Median house prices in Brisbane, as we pointed out um, earlier in this episode, have for the first time in history surpassed that $900,000 price point. CoreLogic confirms it's now at $909,988 as at the end of March. So this is, uh, you know, new, un, mm. uh, you know, it's uncharted territory. Uh, we've never seen house prices this high in Brisbane. Um, a lot of people get nervous when we hit new highs, but we have been hitting new record highs month on month for the last um, several months now here in Brisbane. And that's very important for, for people to understand. Are we at the top of the market? Um, that depends if the direction of the market is still up, because if we're still seeing an imbalance between supply and demand, it may be that we are at the bottom of the market. And that's very hard for people to understand, but prices may never be um, at the same level as they are today in the future if property prices continue to escalate. So don't be scared when we hit new record highs. Look at fundamentals to understand which direction the market is heading and is it a sustainable um, rate of growth. And, and I think when you talk about that supply and demand thing, just as an example, when I jump back to that auction that we went to last on Saturday, just gone, um, I think if someone was look, looking for a new pair of shoes to upgrade, would have been the place to go because there was that many shoes at this auction. It was it was completely packed with people. Um, so the value obviously then from last month, putting a dollar amount on that, we've seen in, that was that's an increase of $10,514 more than last month. And in the last three months, that's $33,997. More than three months ago. I will say though, when we are quoting these, the value change, this is for a property at the median value price point. Yep. So if you are shopping with a budget around the 900 to $910,000, these these figures for comparison will be relative. But if your budget is double that, then obviously these figures will be much less relevant. Yep. Um, but this is simply the, the rate of growth. And in this case, 1% price growth throughout the month of March. 1% multiplied by the property value is the rate of growth you're seeing over a four-week period. Um, and for the quarterly growth, it's 2.8% times the property value is the rate of growth that you can expect that property to have shifted over the last three months. And this becomes important if you're looking at some very recent comparable sales so that you can apply the market uplift that has occurred since those sales have taken place. Anything that we're looking at that's uh, settled more than three months ago, uh, there must be an allocation provided for market uplift to understand what that property might transact for in today's market because the market has definitely continued to shift. And prop track, as we always do, just to show the numbers there, um, increase of 0.38% to a median value of $895,000. Yeah, so based on the house price data, Brisbane now remains the fourth most expensive capital city market based on um, house values. That's behind both uh, the three other capitals of Sydney, Canberra and Melbourne and, and Brisbane's then fourth behind those. So unit prices, um, and we did, we obviously, I like to compare the unit market compared to the housing. The unit market, um, again, very, very strong um, and it's jumped again in March, increasing 1.5%. Yes. Now you'll recall the house market shifted 1% throughout March. The unit market has shifted 1.5%. So that is very strong growth in this segment of the market. Quarterly growth for units in Brisbane also continues to accelerate 
4.1% increase over the last three months. Now, compared that to the housing market, 2.8% growth over the last quarter, and we've now um, achieved stabilization in that rate of growth. So unit prices still accelerating month on month um, and have had much higher growth, 4.1% over the three months. House prices apparently stabilizing at 2.8%. Um, growth over the last three months. So the unit market now um, surging past the housing market here in Brisbane. So the increase then from the median price um, in the unit market from last month is $11,434,000. And and in the last three months, that's $26,777. Again, as you mentioned earlier, that's based on the median price for units. And the median value according to CoreLogic for a unit here in Greater Brisbane is 587,793. So if you're shopping around that median price point, you can expect that there's been around $11,000 of price movement over the last four weeks um, and $26,000 of price movement over the last three months. So it's pretty hard to digest when you're in the market and you're seeing these rates of growth, especially when there's so much competition. When you turn up to the open homes for some of these um, units and townhouses in Brisbane, there are so many buyers looking for this property type. And it can be very disheartening when you keep missing out, especially when the market continues to move in price. We've also been at auctions Um, for units and townhouses. And we've just seen some very strong prices being paid. And I think it comes from a place of of FOMO. People are sick of missing out and they're stretching to buy. And this is now why we're seeing this strong month-on-month price growth continue um, here in Brisbane for this product type. And uh, prop track increase of 0.58% and the median value there sitting on around $600,000, a solid just six hundred. dollars Nice and round. That's right. Um, Now, I will say with Brisbane's median unit values now, uh, we have moved ahead of Canberra's median unit values for the month of March. This is uh, the first time that this has happened. So Brisbane is now the third most expensive capital city market for buying a unit in Australia, ranking behind Sydney and Melbourne, but Brisbane sitting in third place and Canberra slipped behind now. Interesting. It's interesting when you talk about that. I know that we you, you touched on it earlier about how people talk about the median price of property compared to Melbourne. But when you look at the median price for units, we're less. And you look at the median price for houses mm. and we're actually less. Correct. Yeah. That's why we can't rely on dwellings yep. value data. I will say one other thing based on CoreLogic data, units here in Brisbane which remember that does make up uh, both units and townhouses. And there's lots of different types of units. There's high rise units, there's low density units, there's there's lots of different types of townhouses in huge complexes and also in very small boutique complexes. But overall, unit prices in Brisbane, based on CoreLogic data, have outperformed house prices in terms of month on month growth for the last month, for the last quarter, and also for the last 12 months. So if you were a unit buyer 12 months ago, um, at a median value, your asset has uh, improved its capital value more than being a house buyer 12 months ago, which is very interesting because the long-term trend has been that houses have always outperformed units. But we do have an extra special podcast coming up where we really are going to explore are units a good investment to hold here in Brisbane because, as we have talked about a lot, not all units are of the same uh, quality or type. So we're going to take a deep dive into that. Look out for that episode in the future. Correct. And rental market. Mm. Again, it's even tighter again. It is. Um, So people looking to rent property, um, we've seen it contract from 1% in January to 0.9% in February. That's in terms of vacancy rates. Vacancy rates. Yeah. And and now again, 1% in March. So Vacancy rates are actually really tight across Brisbane. Now, this is a reflection of the number of properties available to rent at a particular point in time. Uh, So really, really tight vacancy. Let's take a deep dive into some of the regions as we do um, each month. So when we look at vacancy rates throughout East Brisbane, uh, they remained unchanged between March, uh, between February and March, sitting at 0.9%. In the inner Brisbane, we had vacancy rates of 1.3% in February. Um, That's down to 1.2% in March, so slightly lower. 
Um, in Ipswich, we saw vacancy in February at 0.8%, sitting now at 0.7%. Northern Brisbane, 0.7% unchanged. Southeast Brisbane, 0.8% unchanged, Southern Brisbane, 1% unchanged, and Western Brisbane, 1% unchanged. I do apologise, but I've actually got my numbers around the wrong way for the two regions um, that that have seen some very small price changes. Inner Brisbane for March is actually 1.3%. It was sitting at 1.2% in February. So we've seen an increase of 0.1%. I think I stated it around the other way and apologies for any confusion that I've caused there. Same with Ipswich. It was sitting at 0.7% in February, but it's now 0.8% in March. So a small increase of 0.1% there, but all other regions have remained unchanged throughout the month the month of March. With very, very tight um, vacancy rates like that, I think we'll let you off on the 0.1%. Very this, small changes indeed, this, yes. This time we will. Um, and rents have increased. Mm. We've seen rents increase 7.6% in Brisbane over the last 12 months. That's for house rents. That is correct. So house rents um, have actually showed a slight re-acceleration in the rate of growth over the last month once again. Um, the annual growth rate has been slowly increasing since January this year. So um, we saw those those annual rates drop down to around 6.5% here in Brisbane for house price uh, rents, but that's starting to increase again. So, you know, tight vacancy, more people looking for properties, and obviously that's continuing to um, cause people to pay more to rent the properties. Um, unit rents, they're up 11.2% over the 12 months up to the end of March. Um, and the rate of growth in unit rents has eased slightly over the last three months. So um, unit growth, or so growth in unit rents is obviously a lot higher on an annual basis than growth in house rents. Uh, but tenants will definitely be pleased to hear that that rate of growth is starting to ease and we'll see how that unfolds in the months ahead as well. And gross yields in Brisbane are currently at 3.6% for houses and at 5.0% for units. Yeah, definitely a much higher yielding asset type when you look at the unit market and that does include townhouses as well. Um, but for houses, dropping back to yeah 3.6% gross yields. And again, this is all of Greater Brisbane. We always talk about the fact that if you're buying a very large block of land with a small two-bedroom house, of course, your yield is going to be a lot lower than 3.6%. Um, equally, if you're buying a tiny piece of land with a big four-bedroom, uh, two-bathroom property, your yield might be much higher than 3.6%. So uh, the yields can be relative to the land-to-asset ratio, which is something we often talk about when we are uh, referencing the value of a property, especially for property investors. So keep that in mind. Don't use this as a hearsay that all properties are yielding at around 3.6%. It's very much dependent on the property itself as well as the land content that that property um, shares. Now, in a bit of a, bit of a summary on what we're seeing on the ground, um, as we touched on at the start, we've seen that we saw a little bit of an uplift of listings um, in the market, uh, multiple offers. Mm, very uh, normal. Uh, very normal now. Um, don't be surprised if you see a property that's up for sale um, and it's an auction campaign and, and it sells prior to auction. Mm. Um, don't be surprised by that at all. So if you are looking in the market, make sure you engage um, with the agent um, and let them know that you do have some interest because um, properties will sell and can sell very, very fast. And I will also say that, you know, if you are looking at a property, be prepared to make a very quick decision. I, I feel like we've talked about the multiple offer scenario for a number of years because I feel even in the, the market of 2022 where interest rates started to increase and then early again in 2022, 23, um, we still had a situation where good quality properties were highly competitively sought after, despite the fact that the market in general um, had, had lost a lot of momentum. So multiple offers um, have become more commonplace because of our very low stock environment. There's been a um, a definite you know, attraction to quality and quality properties are still attracting a lot of interest regardless of broader market conditions. But it's not uncommon for property agents or sales agents to receive in excess of 10 yeah. offers on, on some of these properties. And sometimes it's more. I think we've been involved in a multiple offer in the last month where there were 18 offers on, on a single property. So that's very highly competitive. But it doesn't mean to say that if there's only three or four offers that, you know, 
um, there's something wrong with the property. I would be concerned if you're the only buyer that's None. looking at the property because there's definitely um, a lot of buyers looking for quality. And I'd be asking questions perhaps if if there's less interest on a property. Not saying that there's uh, an issue with any properties that don't have as much buyer interest, but we talk about you know that that opportunity to buy without competition. Um, you'd always be asking the question, where is the competition? If it's not looking at the same property, am I targeting the right property type? So just something to keep in mind. And and obviously, if that's scary for people and then they, they don't want to go into the multi offer or we'll we'll handle the multi offer, um, and they need help and they're sick of missing out, obviously reach out for a chat at Streamline Property Buyers because um, we're here to chat and here to help people out and and help them through that. Um, the pain that they feel when, when missing out on property. Construction side of things. Do we really want to talk about construction? Mm. Mm. It's not really it's slowed down. Um <laughs> it's probably not the it's probably not the greatest thing to talk about, to be honest. After um, the uh the proposal of some of the changes to uh wages in the construction industry, it 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 is very concerning and very yeah. alarming here in Queensland that you know, there's such large incentives being offered to those in the construction industry that's going to attract them to government projects. Perhaps we might see um, some of those workers move away from the smaller, you know, privately owned builders. They're the ones that ultimately deliver housing. Uh, so it, it is a concern. There has been a slowdown already in construction across yep. the city. What's likely to happen with the the new legislation that's um, been announced just in the last couple of weeks? Uh, not too sure at this stage, but it's something to watch because, yeah, whilst we're having a real slowdown in the number of properties being delivered to the market through new construction, it's uh, it's unlikely that we're going to see any real shift in in the supply of new properties coming to the market here in Brisbane. It's interesting what they do in the year of an election, mm. um, but we won't get political on it all. Um, migration. Uh, look, why wouldn't you want to live in Queensland? Um, I won't give you the weather update, but I'll just say why wouldn't you want to be up here? When the nights are about sort of uh, 15 to 17 and the days get up to about 27, um, it's pretty, pretty special in Queensland. So migration is still surging. There's still people wanting to live up here and that is putting pressure on the market as well. And not just people relocating from other states, but also those relocating from overseas or migrating from overseas. There's definitely a long, a strong pipeline of, um, of population growth and the projected population um, certainly over the next 10 plus years is is very high. Everyone needs somewhere to call home. If there's very little to rent and very little to buy, we need to understand where are we going to accommodate these people because every extra person increases the demand for, for property um, in a market where supply is already quite constrained. Of course, population growth alone is not the only determinant of demand in a market. Uh, there's a number of other things that we've talked about in previous episodes that contribute to demand, but it's definitely one of those things that we always keep an eye on because it can be a significant um uh, pull in terms of providing that demand side uh, pressure. Now, I can't see Brisbane slowing down. I think it's going to, it, personally, I think it's going to experience more positive growth in the months ahead. Um, and I think it's, uh, look, it's upwards and onwards for Brisbane. So, mm. uh, Melinda, your top three takeaways from today. Look, I would say number one, um, it's been pleasing to see more properties available for sale through higher uh, new listing volumes over the month of March. So that's really pleasing. Um, remember, this is for sale listings, not uh, listings for rent. So with low vacancies, we haven't seen uh, the same in the rental market. My number two takeaway is that prices both in the unit market and the housing market are continuing to grow month on month. So um, it is important for buyers to understand that rate of price growth and further information um, that we've shared with you today, hopefully will be useful for you to assess how much that rate of growth is going to impact you as a property buyer. My final takeaway is that rents are continuing to grow. Unit rents are still growing at a faster pace annually than house rents, although we're starting to see some pullback in the rate of growth in the unit market. House rents um, not growing as fast as unit rents, but the rate of growth is starting to pick up or it has been picking up again over the last three months of the year. So if you're a tenant, um, be aware of that and factor that into your pricing. It's not landlords putting rates up um, or, or their rents up. It's a function of low supply and high demand, and that's what's contributing to the imbalance in that growth. Excellent. So if you want to make the most of it and get into this, this market, reach out and have a chat with the team at Streamline. Always happy to chat, as we mentioned. Um, look, it's been great talking. Uh, market update time's always exciting. It's always great to bring that information to everyone. 
I will let Melinda wrap it up as I normally do. And from me, take care and bye for now. Yes, thanks everyone for joining us again on the Brisbane Property Podcast. As always, if you enjoyed this episode, please share the episode with friends and family. Hit that subscribe button um, and don't forget to leave us a review if you're enjoying our content. Um, a shout out to those that have um, left us a review recently. We really value the feedback that you've shared. We're really grateful that you love the in-house research that we are preparing to share with you exclusively on this podcast. So thanks for the positive comments that have been coming through. We look forward to speaking with you again next week. Until then, bye for now.